So for the first time in a really long time, I find myself in a position where I feel uneasy about the future. And I don't know who needs to hear this today, but I'm just going to share. There's a couple of things that I've realized over the past few days that I'm also going to share that I hope will help anyone who needs to hear this today. But in order to bring you up to speed in terms of how I'm here and what I'm feeling, I think we need to start at the beginning of the year. So 2024 is always going to be a year of change. There is a big change my partner and I have been planning for, I want to say almost four years now. And that, that change, that, that move, that, that thing is happening this year. And at the beginning of the year, we knew that it was a possibility. It should have happened last year if things fell through. We knew that this year could be the year where it would happen. But as all things, when you plan towards something for such a long time, and it kind of creeps closer and closer, you kind of have this dawning of the realization that this is really happening. And for me, it's, it's bittersweet. The channel and YouTube has been really good to me over the past four years. Um, my book coming out last year in 2023, that became an instant bestseller. I've been able to do great things on TV. I've had a, a year run on Stess Pack Lunch as their financial expert. Um, I'm not even going to talk about Secret Spenders, where I was, you know, part of the crew there for that for that set of shows. But I've done so many great things. I've been on the rain. I've been on shows I never thought I would be on. I've met people that I never thought I would ever meet. And this year, it felt like even though I didn't have any concrete kind of like media commitments, in my head, I was like, OK, I need to kind of refocus on the channel. I need to maybe reduce the media commitment that I'm doing. And that's kind of happened. But at the beginning of the year was kind of a bit of a rush. You know, Channel 5 wanted me to be on Jeremy Vine and Friends or um, Alex Conran and Friends. So I did that a number of times. I did Sky News as uh, a commentator for inflation. I did um, boy, Channel 5 News a number of times. I've been on radio multiple times. So media work kind of started to pick up a little bit more, even though I didn't really kind of want it to. And then on top of that, the petition for financial education took us to number 10. And then literally about three weeks ago, I got invited to number 10 to meet Jeremy Hunt on the announcement for inflation coming down to 2.3%. It's been, it's been a whirlwind. It's been strange. And in the midst of all of this, I've been sick twice. I've been admitted to hospital twice, once for sickle cell anemia crisis, once for a chest infection and all of that happened the hospital admissions happened within six weeks six weeks of each other and it's made me kind of like number one be mindful of my health because obviously that's important but it's also had a negative effect on things like youtube now i can talk about my business side of what i do that's done very very well this year and at the beginning of the year i was actually quite nervous i didn't know where my revenue would come from uh, I've been lucky for the past four years that I've never really had to approach a brand to work with me. They come to me. And that's been a blessing. The beginning of 2024, I was worried. I didn't know where it was going to come from. But it just so happened that there were a number of campaigns that companies had me lined up for. And I'm happy to be working with those brands. It's how I pay the bills. It's how I keep the lights open. The lights on, I should say. And so the business side to, to what I do has been great. But the YouTube has suffered because I've been ill. The podcast has definitely suffered because I've been ill. And at the beginning of the year, the YouTube uh, plan was to maybe reduce the number of uploads, one upload a week on a Tuesday, make the video high quality in terms of production value and more importantly, content, and hopefully garner more views. If I'm completely honest, sitting here right now in June, the views on the channel have dropped significantly and that's because I haven't been putting out as much content, but the plan that I had to produce better content, have more kind of like nuggets, tips in there, that hasn't really worked. And so when I think about this move coming up, I'm nervous and I'm nervous for the first time in 10 years because it's a pretty big move. And the reality is that I'd almost be starting from scratch. And given the fact that I was once homeless, 
one of my biggest fears that has always drive me, driven me through my career and certainly through business now is the fear of being homeless, the fear of being broke. And whilst I know that I'm a long way away from that, I still have this anxiety around what the future holds. And if I'm honest, it's a really unfamiliar, unwanted feeling. I don't want to feel like this. There are three ways to keep people stuck. One, get them focused on things they can't control. That's number one. And look at the news. The news is all about getting you to focus on things you can't control. That's going to keep you stuck. Number two, get you to, re to focus on the things you don't have. So now we're going to focus on control and we're going to focus on lack. And just think about the news. Back test what I'm saying. Now you're all out there and, all in, and, and the, the solution is now out there. You're looking out there for it. And then the last one is I need to make sure I get you stuck in the past or in the future. Right? Now I've taken all power from you. And it, and it is not all like somebody else can do this. We do this to ourselves. We focus on things we can't control. We focus on things we don't have. And we focus on the past or we focus on the future, keeping ourselves powerless to change our lives. So taking back control is I focus on the one thing I can control myself. I focus on the things I do have, gratitude, and I get in the very real present moment. Now is all there is of time. Now is all there is of time. And all creation happens now. Now, if truth be told, I think we're all influenced to a certain extent by all three of those things. And I think as human beings, that's a natural thing. Like, we are fallible. We are susceptible to external influences. I'm no different. And if I'm completely honest, there are probably two of those three things that are in play for me right now. And the first is fear of the, un of the uncontrollable, things that I have no influence over. This new thing that is happening presents so many unknowns. It presents so much uh, risk that, I'm, not that I'm necessarily risk adverse, but I don't like going into things not knowing how the ground kind of like lies. And maybe that is a, maybe that's a hangover from my past. Um, the second thing that I think is in play against me right now is the third one, which is, you know, either being stuck in the past or the future. And I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm stuck in the past, but I'm very, very focused on the future. I always have been. I think it goes back to when I was homeless. When I was homeless, even on the streets, I could only dream of a better day. I could only dream of what was coming down the line and how it could be. be it could only be better than what I was experiencing at that given time. And that's carried through my career and it carries through my business. And that's something that my missus says to me all the time. She goes, you're planning for the future. You're not necessarily enjoying the present. And she's right. There are certain things that have happened over the past four years where I'm in rooms where I've met people or something has happened. You know, number 10 being invited to me uh, to invite, to speak to Jeremy Hunt. That was a moment that I don't think I necessarily took the time to really take in, live in the present, because when that happens, I'm automatically thinking of the next thing. And so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix number one and fix number three. This is how I'm going to do it. And I hope that, you know, if you find yourself in a similar position to me right now, where you feel a little anxious around what's coming next, your next steps, you can take a little bit of a hope from this. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out the things that I can control within the realm of this new thing. Um, and when I say that, I don't want to be egotistical when I say this, but I do know myself. And I know that whatever I put my mind to, I can do. And so one of the bigger controllables that I know that I can trust is my own ability, my own tenacity, my own drive. And yes, it's a brand new environment. It's a brand new thing. But putting my best foot forward has always been something that I've been able to do. And I think there has to be a little bit more, I guess, trust in myself to do this all over again. And I think that's probably one of the scary things is the fact that I've got to a position where I feel established, where I feel like I have a brand and I'm known for something to go into this new thing and not be known and possibly not be able to leverage the things that I've done so far. That's scary, but I know what I did to get me here. So I think one of the key controllables is me trusting myself and trusting my ability, trusting my drive, trusting my natural instincts to go off and do, do what I need to do. Um, the, the second thing that I need to fix is obviously 
trying to live in the present right now. If I'm honest, that's going to be hard for me um, because my brain is just wired to think for the future, think for the future. But I think because this move is something that has been planned and been spoken about for such a long time, I think I will have to force myself to enjoy the moment right there and then. And yes, I'm going to have one eye on the future, but I think it's all about balance. I feel like at the moment, I am too weighted to look into the future rather than enjoying the present. And the present is what grounds us. It should ground me. And the present is the vehicle that gives me the propulsion to move into the future. And so I need to, I need, I need to tilt that balance back and get more kind of stuck into the present, really take stock of what's going on in the present so that I can figure out how I can leverage that for the future. That's going to be the hardest thing for me, but that's what I know needs to be done. I'm so grateful for, for where I am. Just being able to be able to, just being able to do this is, you know, pretty incredible. And um, it does represent a new chapter. And look, there are exciting prospects for this move, for this next chapter. And I'm already in discussions with one of them. But I don't know how it's going to pan out. And so it's, it's, it's weird in a way. Um, but the possibilities are exciting. I just don't know what the possibilities are exactly right now. But if I trust in myself and I leverage the present for the future, I think I'll be okay. I think I'll be okay.